All right, section 4.3. I've got one triangle right here. Now watch what I do. I'm going to copy it and paste it. You see what I just did? And it's the same exact triangle, isn't it? Would you agree? Yep. All right, so let's take a look. Uh, let's change colors here. So they're exactly the same. I didn't twist them. I didn't flip them. I didn't do anything. So if they're exactly the same, let's call this triangle ABC. And let's call this uh, DEF. Do you agree with me? All right, they're exactly the same. If I took one, and actually I can do this. You, when I do this on the board or of an overhead, I don't have the luxury of doing this. But watch, I could take this one and put it right on top. And look, it fits perfectly right on top of each other, doesn't it? Would you agree? All right, so, so you would agree they're both exactly the same. So that means, that means several things. Tell me something about line segment AB on this triangle. What do you think, Nico? Great, AB and DE would equal each other, all right? Everybody now. What about AC? DF and keep going. BC? EF. Would you agree? They're exactly the same and I take one and I put it on top of the other and they fit exactly on top of each other. These are corresponding sides. Listen to my terminology here because we're going to use this later on. Everybody paying attention? All right. Not everybody's paying attention. All right. So if I took this triangle put it right on top of here, these corresponding sides, hear what I said? The corresponding sides must be equal to each other. What else do you think must be equal to each other? If I can take this triangle, fit it right on here. Right, okay, the angles. Now, I said the corresponding sides are equal, so follow my terminology. What would I say next? Corresponding angles be equal to each other. Now, when I say corresponding angles, we're not talking about two parallel lines cut by transversal. We're not talking about those corresponding angles. You follow me? But they kind of have the same meaning. They're the ones that match up with each other. So look at angle. Uh, let's do this. Let's call this angle C. We'll put one arc here just because it's across from the side with one arc. It doesn't make any difference, to tell you the truth. We'll call that one arc. So over here, what could I say over here then? Angle C would equal what? Angle F. All right, this has two arcs. We'll put two right here. Angle B would equal? Angle E. Keep going. And then what? Angle A would equal D. Do you agree? So all the corresponding angles are equal. So, watch. A couple things are true. That the corresponding sides of the two triangles are equal or congruent, if you want to say that. And what else? The corresponding... Why did I just go to caps? Corresponding angles would be congruent to each other. Or you could say equal. I'm fine with that. All right, that's supposed to be a squiggly thing. All right, so the corresponding sides are equal. The corresponding angles are equal. In general... We call these the corresponding parts. And I'm getting somewhere with this, and we're not even going to hit that today. Um, but uh, we will talk about this probably tomorrow, I think. All right, that the corresponding parts, now when I say the parts, what parts are there to a triangle? Basically, there's only two parts. What? The what? Angles, angles and the sides. That's right. Okay, the sides and the angles are the corresponding parts. So the corresponding parts are equal to each other. You with me? All right. If everything is exactly the same on both of these triangles, we said the corresponding angles are congruent, the corresponding sides are congruent. What do you think we can say about the triangles? Do we say the triangles are equal to each other? Congruent. We say that they're congruent to each other. And that's the one where I'm really going to be picky about. No, never say uh, triangles are equal to each other. You always say triangles are congruent to each other. Does that make sense? All right. Again, with the sides and the angles, I'm not real, real picky. Some teachers are. All right, just so to warn you, some teacher, if you know, if you have another math class and they talk about this, some teachers are very picky that you always say congruent for the sides and the angles. Eh, I don't really care that much, but when you talk about the triangles, you're definitely talk, you're using the word congruency here. Now let's uh, let's name this triangle. What is this triangle right here named? Triangle, triangle ABC, and we've talked about that, haven't we? How to label a triangle? All right, so we put a little triangle symbol. Triangle what? A. B, C is congruent to, now watch, this is very important what I'm going to show you right now. It's not hard, but it's very important. Do you see how we went in this order A, B, C? Is that the only thing I could have called that triangle? I could have called it C, B, A. I could have called it A, C, B, B, C, A, B, A, C, all kinds of different things, couldn't I? I chose A, B, C. Now, if I chose A, B, C on this one, what do you think? E That's right. I want to go D, E, F on this one. I want the corresponding parts to match up. Do you see it? So if I call this A, B, C, then which one matches up or corresponds to the A over here? The D. So it's triangle D. Which one corresponds to B? The E. 
and which one corresponds to C? The F. It's very important that you write your triangles in that order. The first one, I didn't care what I named it. I could, you know, as long as I have an A, B, and a C in it. All right, I could have named it any order at all. A, C, B, B, C, A. You, you get the idea. But if I name this something, I got to name this in the same corresponding, with the same corresponding parts. Everybody got it? So I could not name this D, F, E. You follow me? Because look at the A. The A and the D match up, don't they? See, the A and the D are in the same spot. They're in corresponding, they're, they're corresponding angles. The B and the E have to be in the same spot, and they are. And the C and the F have to be in the same spot. Now, I could have called this something else. Let's just do this. Let's not call it ABC. Let's call it something else. CBA. Uh, let's do a different order just so we don't just reverse it. CAB. All right, that's good. Let's go CAB. So if I call this triangle CAB, what am I going to have to call this one? So I went C, A, B, I have to go F, D, E. Everybody see that? And they're very picky on that. All right, So it's very important that you write that second triangle in the same order that you do the first triangle. Let's do it one more time. Let's try another. So I went C, A, B. Let's go another way. Let's start with uh, B this time. B, A, C. All right. So watch. If I call this B, A, C, what am I going to have to call this one? E, D, F. Good. So it's triangle E, D, F. That's not hard to figure out, is it? Okay. That was pretty easy because I told you every single angle that was equal to each other. I told you every single side that was equal to each other. Look, this was sitting exactly the same. Everything was facing the same direction. I didn't take it and flip it and do anything, did I? I just took it, copied it, pasted it, and shoved it over to the, to the side. And then I see exactly which ones match up. Sometimes they don't always aren't always so nice to you, and sometimes they'll take a triangle and they'll twist it, okay? Sometimes they'll flip it and that kind of stuff, and you still got to figure out which sides are corresponding to each other. So let's try one of those, all right? Let's pause it while I can get some triangles ready, and then um, we'll continue with this. All right, here's another triangle. I made it obtuse just to be a little different. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy and paste. Now you see which ones match up with each other, don't you? But just for fun, let's, um, let's take this triangle and let's like twist it around like I don't know like that is that all right and to make it a little more complicated let's do this uh, let's tr let's um, reflect it and make it look like that okay now with all that twisting and flipping, did I change the size of it at all? Yeah. No, I didn't change any of the angles, did I? I didn't change any of the lengths of the sides or anything like that. But let's, uh, let's name this one. Let's use something else besides ABC. What do you want to use? Somebody's initials. What is it? J-A-D. There we go. All right. All right. So we'll go like this. We'll go J-A-D. You with me? So let's come over here and let's mark it the same exact way. All right. What's that? Okay, well, no, we, we want to, oh, yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. DHB. Oh, no. Yeah, no, we don't want to use D twice. Let's use something. Else. What is it? R F E. All right, let's take a look. All right, here we go. Um, if I wanted to, let's call this triangle, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, J A D. All right, so we want to come over here, and we want to name the same triangle something. Now remember, oh, here's a theorem, by the way. This is a good, good time to use it right here. Uh, this is theorem 4.3. It's on the page. It's on page 255. If you want to see this, now watch. If you have two angles of one triangle equaling two angles of another triangle, do we have that? Yeah, we do. What do you think must be true about angle A and R? Then they got to be equal to each other too. Because watch, if I add these up. In order to find angle A, what would I do? I would take this one and this one, add them up, and do what to it? Subtract them from 180. Right, and you're right. They add up to 180. So I would take these two, add them up, and subtract them from 180, and I got angle A, don't I? Look, I'm taking the same exact two angles, right? The same exact two numbers, adding them up, subtracting them from 180. So I'm doing the exact same math, aren't I? So guess what must be true about angle A and angle R? they got to be equal to each other, too. All right, so let's, let's just do that. Let's put three arcs here just to show the difference. Now they didn't tell us that A and R were equal to each other, did they? They just told us that 
these two angles were equal to these two angles right here. So according to this theorem, they give it a name, by the way. They call it the third angles theorem. All right? Did you hear that? Third angles theorem. It's on 255 if you want to look. But that's good enough for us. Um, we kind of did a little mini proof. It wasn't really a proof, but we, we talked about why these two are equal to each other, and that's good enough. So now what I want to do is I want to come over here, and I want to... Um, that's an ugly-looking triangle, isn't it? Actually, I shouldn't have done it. Anyway, who cares? Um, let's come over here and name this. So if I go JAD, watch what I'm doing. I'm going from one arc to what? To three arcs to two arcs. So that's the easy way to do it. What I don't want to do is I don't want to have to, in my mind, mentally take that triangle. Okay, if I flip it this way, if I twist it this way, then they're going to match up. It's too hard. It's too hard to figure out what if it's being flipped or if it's being twisted. So I look at the angles. Look, I'm going from one arc to three arcs to two. One to three to two. So let's go over here. What would I do here? What's the what's the one arc? F R E. Everybody see that? And that's how we would name that other triangle. Does that make sense to you? They're going to ask you to do some of that stuff. They're going to give you a couple triangles. They'll name this one, and you're going to have to name the other one in the correct order, and it's got to be in the correct order. I didn't have to call this J-A-D, did I? I could have called it what? Let's go D-A-J. Uh, let's just not let's not go just backwards on. Let's try something else. Let's go D-G-A. D-J-A. Is that all right? D-J-A. Bless you. All right. So if I go D-G-A, watch what I'm going. I'm going two to what? To one to three. Two, one, and three. So come over here. What am I going to go? E F. R, okay, 2 to 1 to 3. Does that make sense? E, F, R. Notice, the J and the F match up, don't they? And they should because they both have one arc. The A and the R match up. They should because they both have 3. And the D and the E match up because they both have 2. Make sense? All right, that's easy enough, isn't it? But it's an important thing. We spent a lot of time on that, but it's important to... Um, to be able to name the corresponding parts. Now, this doesn't always just work with triangles. I mean, we, we talked about triangles. Good, I'm glad, glad you did that, actually, because it reminded me. Uh, tomorrow we're going to change seats, and I'm going to switch it all around. I'm going to decide where you sit. So, so enjoy your seat today. Tomorrow you'll be in a different one, okay? I was planning on it. It wasn't just because of that, but it reminded me. But it reminded me. All right? Let's do, uh, we got a couple minutes here. Let's do one more. Let's draw another picture. Here we go. I got two triangles set up right here. I've got a lot of information on here. Let's listen, please. Let's listen. So, but they have to tell you something. I don't know anything about what sides are congruent or anything, but what they tell you is this. They give uh, what triangles are congruent to each other. They say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DFE. All right. So that tells us something about which sides are equal and which angles are equal to each other. Does it make sense? Yeah. So uh, let's let's do this. A B C. So if I'm going from A to B to C. So let's do this. We'll call that one arc. We'll call this two arcs, and we'll call this three arcs. Is that all right? So let's come over here and do the same thing. What's one arc over here? D. What's two arcs over here? F. That one right there. Right, because I'm going DFE, right? I'm going one, two, three. So DFE, and this one's got what? Three arcs. So now let's take a look at um, let's take a look at the angle. Look at this eight y minus five. So by doing that, this was important, wasn't it? This was very important, and it was important that they're in the right order because it tells you which angles are equal to each other and which sides are equal to each other. So if I'm trying to solve for this angle right here, angle F or eight y minus five, what am I going to set it equal to? 99. 99, that's right. How did I know that? Because they told me which triangles were congruent. So I said that this angle is equal to this one right here, and so I can do that. I'm running out of time. I'm not going to do the math. You can do that on your own. So you can solve for y. Now let's <clears throat> take a look at this side. Now we know what y is, so you can put it in here. So now we basically just have x. So what about this side right here, fe? Well, here's one way. You could come up here and look at it and say, look, fe. What's equal to fe? bc. Or you can do this. Watch this. Do you see this side? It's opposite. Listen, please. It's opposite this angle with one arc, isn't it? All right, come over here. Where's one arc? Right here. What side is opposite that angle? BC. Do you see how BC and FE do match up? Absolutely. So I got 2Y plus X equals 
38.4. Now remember, right here you solve for y, stick that in right there, solve for x, and you're good to go. All right, there's your assignment, page 257, 258, 9 to 12.